Okay, well, I would like to, we are now um, um, live and I would like to welcome everyone to the committee and call the first meeting of the House of Higher Education Finance and Policy Committee meeting to order. It was, uh, let's see, it was, we have a rule in which we are abiding by and of course, I printed it out, but it is not, oh, okay, in accordance to House Rule 10.01. Thank you very much for bearing with me doing that. I am so pleased to have everyone here today. We're going to start by taking our com uh, committee legislative assistant, Jenna um, Mouse. Correct, I'm saying that correctly, right? We're new together. And um, we will go through a roll and then everyone, if they can just say their name and present, that would be wonderful. Uh, Committee uh, Legislative Assistant Mouse, if you could begin, thank you. Chair Bernardi. Bernardi, present. Vice Chair Christensen. Christensen, present. Representative O'Neill. O'Neill, present. Representative Albright. Albright, present. Representative Daniels. Daniels, present. Representative Erickson. Erickson, present. Representative Hansen. Hansen, present. Representative Heinzman. Heinzman, present. Representative Howard. Howard, present. Representative Keeler. Keeler, present. Representative Cleborn. Cleborn, present. Representative Kosnick. Kosnick, present. Representative Kresha. Uh, I believe Representative Kresha is excused. Okay. Representative Mason. Mason, present. Representative Meekland. Meekland, present. Representative Noor. Noor present. Representative Sandell. Sandell present. Representative Sandstead. Sandstead present. And Representative Thompson. Representative Thompson present. Did you hear, did you hear me? Thompson present. Ms. Mouse, did you get that Representative Thompson is present? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome members. It's an exciting uh, first day of our Higher Education Committee. We, um, it's exciting to be here with so many new faces. Uh, last year, we have, I think, three returning members to our committee. So it's gonna be um, a lot of um, people um, learning new information and then welcoming people that have served before in the past. I know Representative O'Neill has been a vice chair of this committee for before. And um, I know also Representative Albright and I'm not sure, um, and Representative Daniels, and I shouldn't have started calling out people because I may have missed someone. Uh, so anyway, but we will talk about that as we move through. Higher Education Committee, I know all of us probably on here value education and know the importance of it. And being able to serve on this committee truly is an honor to help the students of our state. In education, uh, we know that we get such a good return on our investment and higher education is, um, is one of the shortest turnaround in education because it can range from a certification to all the way to like a doctorate degree. So in a short period of time, people can be um, moved on to their lives and be more prosperous and helping our state. So thank you for being here. The fun part about being on the higher education committee, I don't know if fun is the right word, but it, it's um, a breath of fresh air is because higher education tends to be um, less partisan and that we have been able to work together across party lines to help the students of our state. One great example of that is when um, the Ar Argosy school closed down and the students were in crisis. They uh, weren't at, until we intervened, they weren't being able to finish their degrees. They were burdened with um, a lot of financial 
um, expenses and we worked across party lines and um, we listened to the student stories. We found out what their needs were and we took action. I don't think that day, um, if anybody was there, that there was a dry eye in the, um, the hearing room to hear their stories. And we've been working on that for over two years now. And each year we progress, uh, we add more things to help safeguard our students. So this doesn't happen to students again in our state. And I wanna thank everybody who has worked on that. And I look forward to continuing that uh, work together. And then also one of the things that um, since, uh, well, they probably did it before too, but one of the things I really wanted to emphasize when I became the chair of this committee is really hearing the student voice. So bringing our students to the table and um, I call it the tables of power. We don't really realize that we do have this power and to be able to hear the voices of our students to have them share their challenges and their dreams with us is, is very important. So I'm very um, pleased that our students have been engaged in our committee as much as they have been and we will continue that role. And then we just wanna make sure that everybody voices heard and that people from all backgrounds have a voice at our table and so we try to be intentional about that as well. So one of the things I like to start with, and let's let's try to work on this all the way through session, it's, it's fun to build relationships together. We do a lot of hard work around here and being able to develop relationships with each other helps us do our work better and helps make the work um, actually more enjoyable. I do believe, you know, having these shared experience and goals throughout session will make us a more effective committee team and we will continue to get to know each other background, experiences, goals throughout the year. Our first meeting, we are gonna set a time, set aside a time for our members and our staff to share their own personal experiences with higher education. I have asked each committee member to, and staff to come prepare today to reflect on how higher, higher education has impacted themselves, their families, or they can share about how it's impacted their communities. Last year when we did this, it was very moving and it really, um, it, was, it was wonderful to see how we had different journeys and had similar journeys as we shared our stories. We will start by our committee staff to introduce themselves. We have an amazing staff and we will then call on each uh, committee member to do the same. And what I would like to ask is each uh, committee, each person share their name their district, the role that they have on the committee, and um, along with the personal experience that I asked. I, uh, was, um, I would really encourage people to spend, um, and I, I, I know someone was, didn't really like wanna share their story about that much because they don't like to talk publicly and I wanna respect that. So, um, you know, you're not forced to do this and you don't have, it would be great if people spent um, with it, like two to three minutes to share their story. I won't cut you off until probably four to five minutes. But what I realized is last year when people are concise and they share their story, it really, um, it really is very interesting and uh, versus someone going on for 20 minutes and ruining the time for someone else. So I really would encourage members to um, be succinct and to share their stories. And I will, I will um, monitor the time and if it goes on a little bit longer that we won't allow other members to be able to do with staff members, then I will ask you to wrap up. So with that, I, um, I don't know if I should give the, I, maybe I should, I'm gonna start with staff and they've done it before. So they're gonna, they're gonna have had already practice on this. So we are going to start with our house researcher, Nathan Hop. Hi everyone, um, Madam Chair and members. My name is Nathan Hopkins. Um, I'm with the House Research Department, a nonpartisan legislative analyst. Um, I've been with House Research since 2017 and I've been staffing higher ed ever since I started. Um, my story with higher education. I was a first generation college student. Higher education was what brought me to Minnesota originally uh, from St. Louis, Missouri. I came to Minnesota to attend St. Olaf College and 
that's where I met my spouse now. And that's where I met some of my best friends. So that had an enormous impact on my life. Um, after college, I um, got a master's degree in philosophy from Loyola University in Chicago. And then I decided to go to law school at Northwestern University in Chicago. So um, a lot of experience there with higher ed and experience in the legislature. Um, over the past three or four years. So I'm happy to be back and happy to be staffing this committee again and look forward to working with you all. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me at any time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hopkins. And then next we will have uh, Mr. Ken Savory go, our fiscal, our finance analyst. Um, good afternoon, uh, Chair and members. Um, as the Chair said, my name is Ken Savory. I am the nonpartisan fiscal analyst for the Higher Ed Committee this year. Um, I've been at the legislature approximately seven years, and in all those seven years, I've always staffed higher education, so this is a familiar topic to me. Um, I'm originally from the East Coast and grew up in the kind of Southern Connecticut, New York City border area, and attended um, the University of Maine for my undergraduate degree in public finance and also received a master's, master's degree there in public administration and uh, made my way to Minnesota um, via the Humphrey School of Public Affairs um, to, and received a master, an additional master's degree in public policy um, where I met my spouse and um, where we've resided in uh, the Richfield, Minneapolis area kind of ever since. Um, I would say that I had the unique experience of being a student athlete in college. I ran track at the University of Maine and I'm very heavily involved with the alumni group there, kind of uh, from across the country. So um, in terms of higher experience, it's kind of a really good social connection there, as well as with uh, Maine being a place that I really love and kind of care about, and um, as well as kind of my great higher education experience here in Minnesota. As uh, to echo Nathan, Nathan's thoughts, um, as members have questions and work through the committee, huh, the committee process and develop bills, feel free to reach out. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them and uh, walk you through the process. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next person is uh, Mr. Bennett Smith from the DFL Research. Hello, my name is Bennett Smith and uh, I am the higher ed researcher for the House DFL Caucus. This is my second biennium working on higher ed and I was a poli-sci major that graduated from the University of Minnesota Morris, which is just down the road from uh, where I grew up in Donnelly, Minnesota. And I took a little bit of a tour of the University of Minnesota. I started out at the University of Minnesota Crookston as a horticulture major. And I was going to go finish that degree in St. Paul after my first year there and making a semester pit stop in Morris to take some um, general courses. I discovered that I loved the liberal arts and politics and policy. And uh, it was a great place to um, go to school and be able to focus on uh, things that interested me from my egg background, like food justice and uh, rural community economic issues. And uh, it just all came together. So. Uh, I um, got that degree and I wouldn't be here if I hadn't. And uh, it's been a joy to work on this committee and I look forward to another great year. Thank you very much. And we have with us next, Ms. Callie Lehman from GOP Research. Hello, my name is Callie Lehman. I'm the GOP researcher for this committee. Um, I live in District 46B, and um, my experience with higher education, I went to UW-Madison for my undergrad with a double major in poli-sci and economics, um, and then I went to law school at the University of St. Thomas School of Law here in Minnesota, and through connections I made in law school, it brought me to the house and a job that I really enjoy. So again, look forward to working on the Higher Education Committee this session. Thank you very much. And then we have Ms. Jenna Mouse, who is our new committee legislative assistant and welcome to our committee. Thank you and hi everyone. So uh, my name is Jenna Mouse. I'm the committee legislative assistant for higher ed. I've worked at the house or for the legislature for about three years but this is my first year on higher ed. 
and I went to the College of St. Benedict and have a bachelor's in political science and peace and conflict studies. And higher ed is super important to me because my four years of higher education helped shape really who I am as a person today. And my higher education opened up more doors than I ever thought possible. And because of that, I was able to uh, work abroad, study abroad, also complete a Fulbright in Malaysia. Um, so it was just the most amazing four years and led me pretty much ultimately here to the house. So I'm very excited to be working with you all. Well, thank you very much. And um, Jenna, when you shared your story, it reminded me of the question that I, um, I really wanted to make sure that people focus on is, is, is when they share their story, how did it make a difference in you and your family's life? So if there's a way you can please incorporate that into your story, um, that would be awesome. Thank you. And um, we have our committee administrator, Mr. Sean Herring next. Yeah, um, I think when we did this question last time, I was able to talk about, um, you know, kind of part of the th part of the way this has affected me. I know um, my my mother went back uh, when I was when I was in elementary school to start a new career and was able to go to the University of Minnesota uh, with the Master Gardening program, and she's had a small business that has been running for for now 20 years. Um, because of that, I graduated from the University of Minnesota, and that had a huge impact on me. Uh, obviously because I'm here with this committee doing a job that I love and I graduated with political science. But the other piece that I don't talk about a lot uh, and I want to talk about today for this question is um, kind of the other way that our higher education institution helped me out when I was first going to college. I actually went to college in Florida um, at Eckerd College. It's a tiny liberal arts school. Um, in my first year or my first month of college, I actually noticed a little spot on my head um, where I had gone bald. It was about the size of a dime. Um, and when I started going around and trying to find out what was going on, I found out I had a disease called alopecia. Um, and I had alopecia areata, which was, for those of you that don't, that don't know, it's little spots on your head that start to come bald. Uh, mine, by the, by the time I got to midterms, I had lost my eyebrows, my facial hair, everything. Um, and so, you know, for an 18 year old kid, first year in college, that was incredibly difficult. Um, and I was in Florida. I didn't know anybody. This was my, my first time away from home. And there were really no doctors there that could help me. People would tell me, hey, this is what happens with this disease, but there's not a lot, not a lot that we can do. Um, and as I was coming back home for my, for my second year to re-enroll in the University of Minnesota, uh, one of my doctors there emailed me and said, hey, you know, you're going back to Minnesota. The world's leading expert on your disease is, is at the University of Minnesota. You should contact her. Um, and for me, you know, the, the, one of the hardest things about my disease was that you don't, you know, it doesn't hurt your, your, your overall health, but there are mental health issues with that. You know, there's not a, a pill you can take that makes you not dread walking into class the first time when you've shaved your head. Um, there's not a pamphlet they give you that, that prepares you for coming home for the first time and seeing your mom's heartbreak um, when she sees you and you look sick. Um, but I got to come here and I got to, to work with Dr. Maria Hordinsky at the University of Minnesota. She was not just, not just an expert, she was the world's leading expert on my disease. Um, and being able to tell my parents that the, you know, not only someone who could help me, but the person on this planet who was best prepared to help me was a 10 minute bus ride away from my, my apartment. Not only, not only was it an incredibly comforting thing for me, but it was a comforting thing for my family too. Um, so I know we talk a lot about, about higher ed and we are rightfully really student focused, but I know my experience, when I think about like the most important experience for me, it was, it was being able to come here and, and work with a person who was an expert on my, on my condition and who really helped me get through a really challenging, difficult, stressful time in my life. Um, and I know that's not just the University of Minnesota, right? Like working on this committee, one of the great things is I get to meet Dr. Hortinsky's all over the state, working with Min State, the U of M, the private colleges, the tribal colleges, who are who are not just teaching kids, but they make an impact in their community that we don't always see here. Um, and so that's that's the the kind of final part of my story that I wasn't really comfortable sharing last time. But thank you for for listening to me here. Thank you very much. And then we're going to move into our representatives and. Um, Definitely, um, you rose to the occasion and sharing how it impacted your um, you your life. So thank you for sharing that. 
I um, would like to go to um, Representative, our Vice Chair, and welcome to becoming our Vice Chair this year, uh, Representative Christensen, Vice Chair Christensen. If you would like to go next, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Well, thanks, Connie, and thanks, everyone. I'm thrilled to be um, the Vice Chair on this committee, and we have a great group, so I'm excited to, to work with everyone. Um, well, the story of, of higher education for me, first of all, I'll tell you that my mother didn't go through, she went through the ninth grade, um, but she is also, I've never met anyone in my life who read less <laughs> than her. My mother taught me a love of books. My father was um, a pipe fitter, blue collar worker. And so when I graduated from high school in 1973, I didn't really have um, any college goals. Um, so when I became um, 35 years old, I was a single mother at that time. I thought, okay, I have to, I've done some great things. I'd loved my jobs. I'd worked in art galleries. I'd sold real estate. And so I was 35 years old and, and talking with a friend and said, you know, if I went for a degree now, I'd be 40 when I graduated. And she just looked at me and said, well, you'll be 40 anyway. <laughs> I went to school. I went to the University um, of Wisconsin River Falls and, and I became a teacher. And later I, I ended up getting my master's degree in education. So, and that changed not only just the, my, you know, self-reliant and, and the financial um, burden that I carried just being a single mom without a decent paying job, but it, it opened up a whole new world of, um, I, I realized how curious of a person I am. Um, I, I realized that I loved delving in and finding answers and solutions to things. So then I became a teacher and another way that higher education in this, you know, in this, not imagine me in a high school or a junior high classroom teaching English. Um, and I realized, and I want to bring this up because we're all talking about our four year educations that higher education means many things. And it's not just a four-year degree. And so I don't, want, I don't want us to forget all those kids that I met in those classrooms that would raise their hand like this and say, yes, I'm going to a four-year college because that's what everyone did when they really, they wanted to go to a trade school and learn how to fix snowmobiles. So I hope we can bring that, you know, bring all of us together in realizing that higher education means many things to many different people. And it means much more than just a salary. So um, that's a little preachy, I know, but I, you know, I always felt for those kids that um, because I came from a suburb, you know, pretty privileged suburb um, that never quite felt, and they told me this in their writing, um, like they met the muster because they really weren't that interested in college or their parents weren't that interested in sending them to college. So I hope we can work on that in this committee. Um, then my daughter also has had a very unique bumpy ride through college. She's just finishing up an elementary school degree at 41 years old. Um, and now I have a grandson who is at um, Century College looking into a cyber security degree. And I have a, a sophomore in high school too who is going to be looking at some sort of post-secondary education. So I hope we can keep our eyes wide open and, and promote more than just four-year colleges uh, because I do agree every single one of those paths can be life-changing. I also wanna mention not just academics, but the social emotional growth that happens with education as you, you know, at, as an adult. So um, I'm excited to be here with everyone. Thanks for hearing my story, and I'm excited to hear yours. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, and now we're going to go to our lead Republican on the committee, Representative O'Neill. Welcome. Thank you, Chair and members. So I'm Representative Mary O'Neill. My district is 29B, which is Buffalo, Monticello, Maple Lake, and four townships. And I actually grew up in northern Minnesota, not too far from Bemidji. My brother is on the committee. Representative Daniels is my brother. So the two of us grew up in northern Minnesota. And our family had a multitude of businesses. 
Um, we had a hobby farm, we had a manufacturing facility, we had um, Polaris and Suzuki retail, and my father was also a, a real estate agent and a landlord. So there was a lot going on in our household. And neither of my parents had any higher education, but my mother, both of them actually were incredibly, incredibly brilliant. And my mother was very good with numbers and my dad was um, an inventor and very spatial. So he could invent things and build things and make things and sell things and all of that. Um, I ended up going to Bemidji State University, which was just down the road. I basically grew up in Bemidji. We were just outside of Bemidji. And I started off in the pre-med program. Um, I graduated second in high school and I uh, wanted to be a nurse. And then when I went to enroll, they're like, no, 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 you need to go into pre-med. You need to be a doctor. They looked at my grades. And so I started in pre-med and I did about a year of that. And it just didn't quite fit, I think, of what I wanted to do. I would have one student after another, one friend after another, come into my dorm room, sit down on my bed and just spill out their guts to me. They would just tell me their entire life story and they would tell me their sorrows and their pains and their agonies. And, and then they would stop and they'd say, I have never told anybody that in my entire life. And after that happened a dozen times, I said, you know what, maybe instead of being a doctor and being in school for 12 years, maybe I should be a therapist or a counselor. And so I actually changed my undergrad to the most counseling I could get at Bemidji State, which was the applied psychology program with a minor in chemical dependency. And for me, that was life-changing. Um, it, in fact, I think I use it every day here. <laughs> it's very relational. It really helps with conflict. It helps with uh, being able to negotiate things and, and do things in a very respectful way and to listen carefully, listen more than I speak. Um, I tend to be very deep in my thoughts and study quite a bit, and that comes from that. But once I got my undergrad at Midgey State, that wasn't enough for me. And so I ended up going out to Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I enrolled in uh, Regent University. So I actually have my master's degree right there by happenstance and uh, got a master's degree in community counseling with an emphasis in marriage and family therapy. So that was amazing. I, um, I absolutely loved every minute of it. Um, some of the things I've done with the degree is I ended up working at Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge, which of course does um, chemical dependency treatment inpatient primarily. And uh, that was just an amazing, amazing place to work. Um, I am so honored to be on the committee. One thing that I think that we also need to bring that's important to my district is uh, an overall focus on not just the four-year degree or the master's degree or PhD, but also like our vice chair said, the trades, two-year colleges, tech schools, um, that is equally important. And I have so many people in my district that have um, technical school education, they're plumbers, electricians, welders, they're carpenters, uh, they make a great living, they're 49ers. Uh, these are folks that we need, we need desperately, and we need to respect them, most importantly. And um, I think the saddest thing for me is to hear any kind of disparaging remark of a blue collar worker. Um, I owned a tile setting company. So I was one of the few women legislators that owned a construction company. And it's really heartbreaking for me to hear any kind of put down of someone that's in the trades. And so I'm here to not only, you know, be excited about getting a, a bachelor's degree or master's degree, but more importantly, that that is a fit, whether it's technical school, trade school. My daughter is an RTR. She just graduated as a radiologist technician with a two-year degree from Dunwoody and is doing amazing work in the middle of this COVID crisis. So we need everybody, we need all hands on deck. And I think we need to respect everybody's choice. And most importantly, that choice needs to fit their personality and their lifestyle and what's interesting to them. So I think that is the, imbal the balance that we really need to bring to the higher education committee. Thank you very much. I just, I just love learning about people. So this is amazing. Thank you for sharing your stories. We are going to go on to Representative Albright next. Thank you, Madam Welcome. Chair. Um, 
Tony Albright, I live in Prior Lake. I uh, represent District 55B, which includes Prior Lake, Jordan, and several of the townships in Scott County. Um, my role on this committee, as the chair has uh, invited, um, I think is uh, due diligence from a financial perspective. I did spend 25 years in the financial services perspective. And so I'm uh, one of those on this committee that probably will take a deep dive into the, uh, the minutia of the uh, ledgers with the green eye shade on. Um, we have an obligation as fiduciaries to uh, review where the, the dollars are spent. And the reason that, that that is imperative, in my opinion, is as has been said, I think uh, Representative Christensen said it best, you know, education means many, many things. And it means many things to many different people. But it's also going to mean need to mean something very different going forward. Uh, higher education is going through what I believe is a transformation. Uh, I think COVID-19 and the uh, effects that it has had on uh, distance learning and on the vocations and the career paths that people have uh, reviewed and undertaken is certainly going through a transformational process right now. And much like uh, has been said before, four-year degree isn't necessary uh, to accomplish the goals that you have for your life or your career, as has been uh, alluded to uh, just recently by some of the titans in the tech industry, uh, Musk and uh, folks from Dell and Apple. Uh, they're actually looking at folks with, with or without uh, any type of a degree they're really looking for is imagination and critical thinking. And I think that's what higher ed is really called to do. Um, we need to be looking uh, like uh, Wayne Gretzky, looking to see where the puck is going to be, not where it's now. And I think that uh, is incumbent upon this committee to start thinking in terms of what does the pipeline look like as a workforce development supplier to the businesses and, and industries in, in Minnesota? What are they needing? Not today, not just today, but in 20 years from now. And it's a large undertaking. Um, my background in education is I, I went to a two-year college at Golden Valley Lutheran College for two years. Uh, and then I transferred up to Moorhead State where I uh, graduated with a degree in uh, business administration with a focus on finance and marketing. That uh, molded me in a lot of different ways and, and life and time is too short to really explain all of them. But I do think that uh, higher ed really uh, is responsible in the lives of every person here, uh, whether they just take away the, the teaching that co goes with that or the mentorship and the, and the mentors that come out of that. Um, it fosters growth, both individually and, and in the communities that we all serve. But it's also a forum uh, for the exchange of ideas. And I would hope that you know, we could also uh, promote uh, through this uh, committee and through the uh, effects that we have on legislation to help foster that open and civil dialogue uh, between all uh, parties to a conversation, whether they be on campus, uh, on a social media platform, or in the coffee uh, beast, you know, coffee uh, shops where we all congregate to discuss and debate the issues of the day. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to the next two years, and uh, I. Um, I contemplate and look forward to much success coming out of our efforts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Representative Daniels, how has higher education impacted you or your family's life, or you could do your community to share that? Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, always a good community to be on. Uh, this will be my seventh year in higher ed. And uh, I, when they put me on higher ed uh, in 2015, I was a little confused because uh, my extensive uh, experience in higher ed was one semester at Bemidji Tech for small business management. And that was after I was running uh, what Marion uh, referred to as our Suzuki Players business. Um, I started running that when I was 19. And I think it was three years later, I went to Bemidji Tech just to see if I was doing things right. And, um, it was kind of fun. It was a learning experience. And uh, so I, I kind of learned a blue collar way. Um, our business uh, is, was in Clearwater County, the poorest state in the county. 
Uh, we were selling high-end merchandise to about 50% of the people who were either on welfare or some type of assistance. So selling a you know a higher priced uh, toy to people there was a was a task that uh, nobody thought we could do. But um, I just you know, I just saw the opportunities there. Um, even though the business was losing quite a bit of money uh, before I started, um, it, it didn't take a lot of um, didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out how to fix some of those things. And within a two year period, I managed to put it from severely in the red to comfortably in the black and kept that going for about five, six years. And so that was a, kind of my college experience. Um, but the proudest thing I am uh, of was uh, my wife went to back to college to finish her last year. Uh, I'm sorry, last three years, uh, middle age. She was uh, 32. When she went back to college and graduated, uh, no, 33, I'm sorry, 33 and graduated, she was 36. And um, so our four children, we've got an oldest daughter and three boys, um, all four of them uh, went to either a four-year college or a two-year tech degree. And uh, happy to say they all landed jobs in their field. Uh, my, my daughter was uh, working for the HR department down in Destin, Florida. And uh, that's where she, she met her future husband. And then my oldest son was went to the deaf school and then I'm going to Wilmer Tech uh, to get a welding certificate, welding degree. And he's been extremely successful. He's been promoted a number of times at uh, Foldcraft and Kenyon and he now oversees four different uh, departments. And uh, his best friend from high school, who is also deaf, uh, about two years ago, they hired him as well. So it's it's kind of a unique thing. They can have uh, be on other ends of the building pretty much, and they can have a conversation back and forth. Um, and my middle son is a mechanical engineer. Um, started with Boston Scientific. Um, he didn't like uh, the size of it. It wasn't kind of what he was looking for, so it didn't fit him real well. And now he's working for Nanan, which is a privately owned company. They do the um, they just invented uh, about a year ago the blood pulse uh, thing for your finger. So it'll, it'll not measure just your blood pressure, but your blood pulse. So that company has just been really skyrocketing. And then uh, my youngest son went to Star Stout um, and picked up a degree in uh, Studio Arts. Um, but because of the lack of jobs in, in uh, that field, um, he's right now in Eugene, Oregon, doing blue collar work of working for a cement contractor and uh, getting very physically fit. So he's, he uh, didn't get a chance to use his degree. But anyway, I'm just uh, happy my family all went through the experience and they have all have some good paying jobs. And uh, um, like a number of people have mentioned today, it's not just about the four year degree. Um, if you can get a, a um, a job that you enjoy, whether it be a two-year college degree or a four-year college degree. Uh, that's what it's all about. My uh, younger son's uh, best friend was uh, went to a four-year degree for accounting and I uh, didn't see him for four or five years. And also I bumped into him and he was a mechanic at the co-op, our local co-op. And I said, Brian, what are you, you, know, what are you doing here? You, you, you went to four years of college. He said, yeah, but I really didn't like that. So that would be nice to catch these kids uh, before they spend sixty, seventy, eighty thousand uh, dollars to do to go to school and not, you know, like what they do. So that's kind of my goal is to get the kids the jobs that they like and that they can make a good living at. And thank you for allowing me to be back on the committee. Thank you, Representative Daniels. Our next person is Representative Erickson. Welcome to the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I am Sandra Erickson. I represent House District 15A and live near Princeton, Minnesota. I'm a North Dakota uh, girl and uh, attended uh, Concordia College in Moorhead, graduated in 1964, 30 years after my mother graduated from a two-year college and became a teacher. So my career is in, was in teaching. I majored in English and journalism and uh, what I want to instill in our children 
in our young people, I guess I'm out of the K-12 realm right now in this committee, is that lifelong learning is so important. And so I have been a student in every decade except the 2000s and the one we're in now. Uh, in the 60s, in the late 60s, after I began my teaching career, I launched off into journalism. I was a Wall Street uh, newspaper fun fellow at the University of Minnesota and loved that. Uh, then I went on to St. Cloud State University, which is not far from Princeton, and uh, studied uh, courses in reading, uh, always trying to improve my skills uh, in my, for my classroom students uh, and uh, instilling in them uh, you know, new techniques, new ways to learn and to enjoy education. Uh, then in the 70s, I launched into uh, some more specific uh, courses in teaching uh, English as well as journalism. I attended um, um, North Dakota State University, which had some great reading programs. Uh, also Bethel University was Bethel College then. Uh, also um, St. Thomas, where I took a teacher training and ultimately uh, UCLA, where I studied under Dr. Madeline Hunter and learned uh, her method of delivery in education and uh, just, just loved her uh, definition of teaching and uh, how that is, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of decisions by a teacher. Every lesson that we present, uh, teachers are decision makers and that stayed with me. So, you know, I want, I want our uh, young people to know that whatever you pursue, uh, think of always uh, uh, improving yourself by finding coursework or a skills training, something that can bring you closer to what you love and what you know you do well and how you can help people. So I think uh, with that said, uh, I'll end my, uh, my little review of myself and uh, offer it to someone else. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Erickson. Next, we'll be welcome. Uh, want to welcome Jess Hansen to the committee and um, look forward to her story. Chair Bernardi, my name is Jess Hansen. I represent District 56A, which covers all of the city of Savage and the northwest part of Burnsville. My journey to higher education is unique. It's different than what I think we hear a lot about in the legislature. I dropped out of high school when I was just 16 years old, 15 years old. And I stayed out of high school for a few years. When I was 17, I got pregnant. I went back to high school with a baby and I ended up making up my two and a half years of high school in less than a year at an alternative school uh, in Dakota County. And that gave me the skills that I needed to not just get a diploma, but it put me into a, a college environment. I come from a very long line of blue collar workers. My great-grandfather owned a business here in the district. My grandparents uh, were UFCW. Uh, my grandma was a UFCW employee and my grandpa's a carpenter. My dad's a teamster, my mom's a bus driver. College wasn't something in my future. It wasn't something we talked about. The idea of applying credits, paying for it was not something I had ever been exposed to. But when I got the opportunity to go back to high school, uh, the program was hosted at DCTC, uh, the Dakota County Technical College. And just being in that college environment gave me an opportunity to see how kids not much older than me were navigating the system. I ran into people in the hallways who were also teen moms. I had a counselor there who said, if you can work in this environment in the high school part of this building, you can make it in the college environment. And so I immediately, as uh, after graduating high school, I enrolled at Rasmussen for a business degree. And I tried to do that while I was juggling two full-time jobs and a brand new baby all by myself. Uh, as you can imagine, that didn't last long. <laughs> it got really hard. Um, and I ended up having to work more at my jobs. And so I dropped out of college when I was about uh, 21 years old. And I didn't think I'd ever go back. I thought that was the end of my college journey. I would tried something new that my family had never done. Um, and I just figured it wasn't for me. Well, I have a good job uh, that I secured when I was 19 years old. And I knew I wanted to kind of go up and, and get promoted there. So I, I knew I needed to do something different. And so I decided to uh, go back to college uh, when I was 25 with two young kids. And that opportunity 
was, again, not something I was doing. I was still waiting tables full time while working a full time day job and raising kids. And um, I, I enrolled at the University of Northwestern St. Paul um, after encountering their admissions counselors in some faith based settings. And I was there, I did all of my uh, generals and all of that. And then I took a Psych 101 class. <laughs> and much like uh, Representative O'Neill said, I fell in love with the, the program. Uh, I fell in love with the, the type of work that that was. It helped me understand the trauma I had experienced as a child who grew up in poverty. It helped me understand why some things were harder for me than it was for my peers. And it helped me grow an appreciation for the helping field in general. Um, as I got into my third year at uh, University of Northwestern St. Paul, I learned about social work and decided that counseling wasn't for me, but I wanted to work with my community. And so I switched my third year and went to St. Catherine University, where I finished my bachelor's in science degree uh, in social work. Immediately after that, I rolled into a graduate program. I was supposed to be taking my LSAT for law school the day that I decided I was going to meet with the uh, admissions counselor uh, for the MAPL program at Metropolitan State University. And when I took that program, I, I learned that this is where I, I knew I loved politics. This was the kind of work I wanted to get into. And I am still a college student, so I'm still wrapping up that degree. I have one class left to take. Uh, I decided to run for office instead of finishing that up. And so I'll be finishing that up. And so college is very important to me. It has given me an opportunity to see what my potential can be, the work that I can do, um, and to be an adult learner in this. I think it's important to also say that, um, again, as a single mom, I'm coming out of college now with $80,000 of school loans. And so on a government salary, I'll be making $800 a month payments on my student loans beginning in just a few months. And so those are some of the things that are really important to me that we talk about is that the pathways to college aren't always clear. A lot of people don't know how to get into these uh, settings. And so I'm very excited to be on this committee. I'm very excited uh, to hear the stories of students uh, and everybody on this committee and continue to do the work we need to make sure this is a world-class education system from cradle to college here in Minnesota. So thank you everybody for having me. Thank you, Representative Hanson. Now we're going to move on to Representative Heitzman and welcome to the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm glad to be on the committee. I've uh, missed one term. I had previously served on the committee for two terms starting in 2015 and uh, glad to be back. Um, i start out by mentioning I represent the Brainerd Lakes area that's smack dab in the center of the state, uh, District 10A. And my wife, Carrie and I have been married for 21 years. It'll be 22 this coming summer. And we have six kids, uh, one of which has uh, just recently graduated from our local mid-state campus, that's Central Lakes College with his AA. And, was able to do that with zero debt because of a little known program, which shocks me. And uh, Chair Bernardi, we've discussed this on numerous occasions, but PSEO, terrific option for kids. CIS, College in the Schools, another terrific option for kids, little known in many cases. Uh, what amazing opportunity. Now that uh, my oldest son has graduated his AA, considering kind of what his next steps are, my, uh, I have two daughters now that are also, uh, at that same campus and earning their degrees um, as junior and seniors. So super, super terrific opportunity for kids. So obviously gonna be a focus for me on this committee, making sure that we're doing absolutely everything we can to continue to uh, develop uh, PSEO and CIS for uh, uh, juniors and seniors in, in uh, otherwise have normally been uh, just a high school opportunity now in Minnesota and, and for decades, in fact, an option here. So um, like to uh, uh, continue to talk about no other issues and we'll bring those up, I'm sure, and, and get to visit about what we can do to uh, um, not just uh, throw more money at some of the challenges that we face in higher ed, but also find solutions for cost savings. So often in government, we are very, very quick to embrace the next program without a real cost benefit 
of what we're getting for those dollars. Huge investment being made both at the University of Minnesota campuses and then also on Lynn State. And uh, we, we've got a lot on our plate, Madam Chair, a lot of, uh, a lot of subject areas to look very closely at. We're unfortunately looking at a deficit. Um, hopefully, Minn State and uh, University of Minnesota are going to be coming back to this committee, not just with requests, but also uh, some troubleshooting and, and some solutions to try to uh, help us as we're likely looking at a negative target. So those are some of the tough issues I think we're going to be grappling with and hopefully finding solutions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Now, our next person is Representative Howard, and I look forward to hearing about how higher ed has impacted you and your family's life, or you can talk about your community if you'd prefer. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll talk a little bit about both. Um, my father was the, the first person in his family to attend college, and I, growing up, I heard a lot about that uh, from him and my grandparents as a source of pride. Um, and so, you know, it was instilled in me that uh, just the benefits of, of uh, high, higher education. Uh, I attended Augsburg College, um, and it's really, I'm here because of that experience. Uh, it's where I sort of found my passion for uh, politics and government service. Um, and uh, I'm so grateful for that experience. Uh, it, my community uh, in Richfield and East Bloomington uh, there is a lot of uh, young people in our community that, that might not see higher education as a path for, for them. That's what I've heard from, from their family, their communities. I, I'm serving in this community because I want to make sure that there are pathways, multiple pathways for people in our community to get a degree, uh, get a, an education that uh, helps them succeed in, in the real world. And the other reason I'm grateful to be on this committee um, is because I uh, remember uh, what happened to our students to higher education uh, during difficult budget times in the past. Uh, under Governor Pawlenty, uh, with big budget deficits, we saw huge cuts to higher education. And tuition at our public colleges and institutions doubled in that time. And now Minnesota has some of the highest uh, tuition costs of, of uh, our peer states around us. And so facing a difficult budget time, I'm excited to be on this committee and to do all we can to make sure that our students are front and center and, and that our institutions have the resources they need uh, in this challenging time. Thanks, Madam Chair. Oh, thank you. We are going to move on to Representative Keeler and uh, welcome to the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. I'm really excited to be here. Um, higher ed is something that is really a passion of mine, but it carries a lot of emotions. I feel like my education journey has been uh, like a connect the dots type of a game. Um, coming out of K-12, I was always told that I wasn't meant to go to college, like just go get a job, kind of do your thing in the world, like this wasn't a space for you. So my first journey was I went to Southwest State uh, down in Marshall, Minnesota for a semester, ended up on academic probation just because I believed all those messages that were given to me in K-12, um, went out to the world and as many of you have talked about the importance of um, our two-year programs, I actually earned my associates uh, in marketing in 2014. And I felt like I had made it, that was it. I achieved something really great, uh, went out and worked in the world. And I realized that uh, there were a lot of decisions that were being made for me and for students who had similar experiences as me. Um, and so I worked um, in Indian education for a long time. And one of my biggest goals there was to fit into the world's uh, best workforce in college and career uh, readiness with our students. And so I come in with a lot of different lenses. Uh, one is a job. I help students. I heard students and families and their barriers getting into higher ed. Um, but um, like um, Representative Daniels, I think you said your wife went back to school in her mid thirties and, and I did the same thing. I was you know, kind of considered and tagged like an older than average college, college student. Um, and rep all right, go Dragons, I went to MSUM. Um, I got my undergrad in project management and it was actually um, the first time in my whole entire life in an education setting that I actually knew that I was smart. Um, and it was because I was surrounded by support systems. So when we talk about higher ed, it's more than just the academic piece that we learn, it's really about the supports. Um, if it wasn't for the state programming, like the daycare um, grant program, because I, I am a mom, 
um, that I needed that help to go to school. I was working full time, um, going to school full time, but also um, the Minnesota Indian Scholarship really were the things that, that helped me thrive. Um, and so while I was at MSUM, one of my professors just kind of told me I was going to move on and get my master's degree, which was something that was like completely out of the realm um, for me. And so I just said, okay, I mean, I guess that's what I'm going to do. And so then I moved on um, and got my master's degree uh, in educational leadership because I wanted to be at the tables where we had conversations around education equity. Um, and so my practicum work was doing talking circles in my community, talking about the barriers to education. Um, and at the time, it really sparked me to want to get involved, and I was going to run for school board. Um, and lo and behold, here I am a year later. Um, and so that's kind of my personal journey with education, but also I work in higher ed. I'm an assistant director for multicultural recruitment. Um, I help create those bridges so that um, education is an opportunity for everybody and not just a privilege for some. Um, I think a lot of us really need to look at ways that we you know, invest in our next generations um, and that we work together to make sure that we're more inclusive in the ways that we do our outreach. Um, I really appreciate all of you sharing your stories. Education is so powerful to all of us um, and to any of the public that's watching, we see you, this is an opportunity and make sure that education is always a lifelong uh, learning option for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Representative Keeler. Our next one is uh, one of our senior members on the committee, and that would be Representative Gleeworth. Um, thank you, Chair Bernardi. This is such a great exercise. Um, it's amazing to see the incredible talent that is present at this table. Um, I want to say, for me, education is a zigzag, right? It's a zigzag path. There is no one perfect route for anybody. Um, I started off my personal education as a, a trade school student and I worked for three years. And what I realized, uh, and I just love what Representative Keeler just said, I realized I was smart. It was like one day it was like, oh my gosh, I'm smart. But what I realized is that, yeah, I was smart, but it was like seeing an airplane without having a ticket. I couldn't get on the ride. So I had to go back to school and get um, a bachelor's degree. That was the way that I was gonna make my move and to move up in the world. And so that's what I did. Um, I'm the first and only of my siblings to go to college. And that path that I took and higher education allowed our family to live, not just in the United States, but also in Europe and also in Latin America. And I did a lot of uh, civil rights and human rights work in uh, Latin America, which opened my eyes to so many differences. Uh, when you really live in a culture that is outside of your own for a substantial period of time, you see that there aren't rights and wrongs different. And so to Representative O'Neill, I agree, everybody has uh, the right to dignity no matter what they do. And I just think that's great. But what higher education is, is it's an investment in our people and it's an investment in our state for them to create the best person that they can be. And, and that's what I love about serving on this committee. We see all of the hopes and dreams for the future before us. And our universities and colleges uh, provide that opportunity for our students. And our responsibility is to figure out how we help them be these individuals and institutions, the idea generators for our state, the innovative engines for our state to help us have those strong economies. And, and personal fulfillment that we all want. Um, and in listening to these stories, I debated about saying this or not, but I am so proud of my family. Um, I have three children who have three partners and uh, three spouses, partners. And with that group, what, what the belief in higher education has done for my family we have a PhD in immunology, a PhD in genetics, a PhD in food science. We have a master's degree in urban planning. We have a master's degree in IT, and we have a PhD candidate 
uh, in uh, IT. I mean, it's incredible the conversations that we are able to have at our table at holidays to help solve world problems. And that is all because of the value and benefit of higher education. And I never thought that I would say, I am so proud that I am the least educated in my family because my children have gone on and been able to do better things than I. And it's a gift. Higher education is a gift, whether it's starting in the trades, it's about stackable certificates and allowing people to create their own destiny through the institutions that we build. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was on mute. And now we'll go on to Representative Kosnick. Welcome to the committee. Hi, welcome. And thank you, to Representative Cleveland. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, it's great to be on another committee with you. I'm used to seeing you more on transportation. And for others that are watching, uh, this is my first time on higher education, but I've spent uh, all of my four terms on transportation, a little bit on taxes, metro uh, governance. Um, so I'm looking forward to this this committee. Um, I represent uh, the city, part, most of the city of Lakeville, about 75, 80% of the city uh, and no other cities uh, are in within my district. So uh, about 25 miles south of here for those that don't know. Um, so it's a metro district. A uh, lot of my constituents uh, may attend uh, Dakota County Technical College, Ember Hills Community College, a lot of Normandale, and then of course, a lot of the other uh, uh, state colleges and, and universities throughout the state. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to this. I, I think having a skill or an education is, is the key and a great equalizer to anybody being able to achieve the American dream. And so I know uh, I, I went to St. Cloud State. I just didn't happen to have a, uh, a zip up today, but uh, felt it was appropriate to wear my U of M one uh, today. Um, I attended and grew up in, in Anoka, I graduated from Anoka High School. And I had, uh, I have a master's degree, excuse me, a marketing degree uh, in uh, from St. Cloud State University. And uh, so I'm looking forward to being on the committee and, and seeing how we, uh, education, the, the delivery of education is transforming. COVID is gonna um, enhance uh, maybe some delivery methods and, and learning more about that. But uh, as a father of uh, an eighth grader, or excuse me, a seventh grader and a ninth grader, I'm looking forward to seeing what and learning more through this committee what some of their future options might be and uh, contributing to uh, the committee and, and making sure that we provide uh, people the, the workforce opportunities that our economy uh, demands and, and we can match those skill sets with what we're teaching at our colleges and universities. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Kosnick. Now we will go on to Representative Mason. Welcome to the committee. We do have a lot of transpo people here, it looks like. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Trying to figure out, there's education is incredibly important to me and maybe give you some background. All my grandparents came from what is now Czechoslovakia. My parents, my mother only went to eighth grade my father graduated from high school, wanted to be a doctor. And actually I was just pulled out his chemistry book, but he never made it to college. He worked two jobs most of his life. I'm sorry. But both my sister and I made it through college. And I was four, yeah, I think. I was really fortunate. I did well. And when I wasn't sure what to do after high school, I had a really good counselor and uh, who pushed me into, uh, we ended up, I ended up majoring in political science, but I only applied to one college. It was, it was I, might, I went to a Lutheran church and there was a visitation one weekend and I went down there, really impressed. That was the only, it was Valparaiso University. And I was, you know, as I said, I applied, I got a scholarship, I got work. My parents helped me, so I was able to make it through. And, but the fact that so, you know, it's, 
It's the fact that you need to have somebody help you. You need to have somebody pushing you. And we have so, you know, that's why I think we try to make it so, you know, at least help people to make it through, even if they don't have the family background to provide, provide the support. I mean, it's, that to me is one of the most important things that we do as legislators is to make it possible for people to get to college, even if their families don't have the wherewithal. Um, my grandfather never really spoke. I can't re remember him even speaking total English. Usually he was a Bohemian and English uh, mixture. So, I mean, it's, things have changed so drastically, but in today's culture, I mean, it, education is important. It doesn't make in, and at this point, as somebody has pointed out, you don't need a four year degree in maybe literature or something, but normally, even if you're going to do a profession, whether it's plumbing or electric, being an electrician, I mean, it's more than you can get in just high school. And those are things that we as, a, as state legislators need to make it more important that anybody can get the education that, that their particular uh, talents decree. And I know like in my, high, in my school district, they do make it possible for kids. You don't have to go for a four year. You can end up being a welder. You can be do, doing things. So those are things that I think are important for us to, uh, to be pushing forward. And as I said, it's providing the support so is really important, uh, particularly for, for kids that may not have the family background to provide the support that some of us were very lucky to have. Uh, so that's, yeah, those are the, those are the things that I think are important. And I know I would have been heartbroken if I couldn't go to college. I mean, that's, I spent my life reading. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, and to think about what would you have done if I didn't have that opportunity? And as I said, it's, Education opens opportunities of all sorts with that, whatever your, your talents are. So that's my story. Thank you, Representative Mason. Next, we will go to Representative Meckland. Welcome to the committee. All right, so I'm gonna turn my video on here. Uh, this is actually kind of a really interesting thing. I, I didn't see myself being put on this committee um, as I never went to college. And my parents came from um, and, and so much so that I never went to not only college, but, but I had to work um, to not only help me, but help them. So uh, it's telling my internet's on connection stable um sorry um but literally supported my parents for 17 years and i did it all on my own um and, and it, it, it's not that's a bad thing i i learned a lot through that process and failure is not an option uh, I, it, it just it, it is what it is and you have to just go um while i do agree education is very important However, I've learned so much from so many that have taught me things and tool, gave, gave me tools to understand how to actually accomplish the simple things in life that makes us provide for not only our families, but immediate family, but our, our extended family. And, and I think there's a big conversation here that has to happen. Um, I, I put one kid through college so far. I got another one coming. Good Lord, I don't know what that's going to cost. By the way, uh, Marion... Um, the one I put through was a beaver. He went to Bemidji. So I had to put that out there. Um, just saying. Um, and he's doing well. And, you know, in his, his career path was kind of a different thing. Um, I, I don't know. When he came back, he didn't even know what the job paid. And, and I was, like, dumbfounded. After four and a half years, you don't even know what this job's worth. 
So, you know, we all have different opinions of how we come at this. But what I do know is if you have drive and you have energy and you really want to put yourself into it, you can do it and you can make something for yourself. So I think that's the point where we have to get to of, of encouraging each individual to find their own individual thing that what, what's best for them and not just what's best for higher ed or, or whatever. It's what's best for them. And, and this four year thing, well, if you wanna be a doctor, absolutely, or a lawyer, I, I don't disagree. However, it, it, you know, being a trade guy is not a bad thing. I mean, heck, some of us done pretty darn well. And I think we can, you know, continue to push that. I know people that like, like never went to any kind of school, they simply clear drains for toilets and they make six figures plus. So I, I think we actually have to look at the individual and not just have a blanketed policy on this whole thing. So, I'll, oh, hey, I, I'm sorry. I'm Representative Shane Mecklen. I represent District 15B, which is Sherburne and Benton County and a little bit of Morris, a little bit of Wright. So I forgot that part in the beginning. Anyway, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm hopefully I'm done sooner than Thank you, Representative Mecklen. Now we're on to Rec Representative Noor. Welcome to the committee. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is uh, Mahmoud Noor. I represent District uh, 60B. That is the neighborhood surrounding uh, the entire University of Minnesota in Minneapolis. Um, I'm excited to be here because sometimes I usually tell folks I kind of represent everyone in the state when everyone comes to the Twin Cities uh, University of Minnesota because it's in my district. Uh, and quite frankly, in terms of my background and experience, arriving here as a young person, uh, my parents told me, you can get to work and earn enough income, but you can also choose the path of going to gain skills and go to higher education and no one will ever take away the skills that you have gained in life because that's how you can thrive in the future. And reflecting back, as I struggled uh, going to college, I started with Min State uh, MCTC, and then knowing that working two jobs, trying to pay just the regular tuition has been a struggle. You know, sometimes I uh, will you know, take classes in some of the colleges that I've gone to graduated from Metropolitan State University in St. Paul, uh, I'll find myself the only black person sitting in the classroom taking computer science degree so that I can help myself. I consider myself to be lucky because I had that opportunity, but luck should never determine our future because we know if we give people the tools that they need, if we give people the opportunity, the possibilities are enormous. I know those are things that every parent dreams for their kids. As a parent myself with four young kids, I keep thinking about how am I going to afford to get them through college if they decide to go to college. I'm still paying for my own college tuition, like many of you, because that's something that I believed in. And I think uh, on a bigger question that we need to ask ourselves, how do we give each and every student an opportunity to afford college and have access to better opportunities? We can unlock those dreams for those young people who are dreaming today because their dream can be realized with simple help. Let's look into how we can thrive together as, as a state. As we look into the future, Things are changing, the economy is changing. As the chair for workforce and business development, I look towards higher education to open the possibilities for individuals through different pathways, skills that can be earned while you're sitting at home, or you can do different paths to help people earn sustainable income so they can support their families 
put a roof over their head, pay for their rent, and be able to put food at the table. So Madam Chair and my colleagues, we have got an enormous challenge in front of us, and we need to seize the moment to do better for all so that we can thrive together. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Noor. Now we're gonna to go to Representative Sandel. Welcome to the- Representative, yeah, he's up there. I see him, he's off mute now. Welcome. Am I the only one who can't hear him? No, he. I think he's got technical difficulties uh, with his mic. Representative Sandel, we cannot hear you. Do you want to troubleshoot that? And we'll go to Representative Sanchez and then um, come back to you. Is that okay? I think that's what we will do. Um, Sorry about that, Representative Sandel. Okay, so now we're gonna can go to Representative. Oh me? yeah, we can now, yes we can, go ahead. We could hear you. Oh shucks. Okay. You're still on mute. There you go, try it. Oh. It's toggling back and forth. Madam Chair, I think uh, okay. uh, he's muted. Okay, he's, okay, he's muted. okay. Right, so we'll come back to him if we can. At, well, we'll come back to him at the end. Representative Sandstead, welcome to the committee. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. It's, it's uh, wonderful to be part of this committee. Um, I am definitely passionate about education E14. Um, and I, I didn't really even realize why it became so important to me, but I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I come from a family of seven children and my both my parents um, never had an education beyond high school, not a formal education beyond high school. No, not to brag, but I think I had two of the most incredibly intelligent human beings to call as my parents. My father had quite a bit of training through um, the military. He did some time with the army and was highly intelligent. He worked with Werner von Braun on the V2 rocket. He was part of the greatest generation. And when he was done with his time in the service, he came back um, and raised his family. And that is what my parents did for their entire lifetime. Uh, 20 years from oldest to youngest spanned quite a, quite a time for them. And my father made a very, very humble living. And my mother spent her time um, raising us traditionally and having to supplement that income through sewing in the home and doing, you know, different kinds of um, domestic uh, opportunities, basically, uh, to help make ends meet. And I am grateful that we always had enough. We always had a roof over our head. We always had food and we always were clothed. Now, as being at the tail end of that um, uh, string of children, I'm highly familiar with hand-me-downs. And, uh, you know, we worked hard. We were a hardworking family. And I learned through all of that, the value of hard work. But I also thought, as I got older about the opportunities that my parents may have had, had they had the opportunity for some type of ongoing education, higher education, they might not have had to have worked as hard and maybe could have had some time at the end of their lives to enjoy themselves a little more comfortably. That wasn't their story. Um, and I decided, I hope to make it a different story for myself and certainly for my children. So before I go any further, I represent uh, District 6A, which is uh, a great part of the Iron Range. I live in Hibbing and we have uh, community colleges in my area. 
Um, I am a mother of three. I'm in my 27th year of K-12 public school teaching. Um, so this, like I mentioned, is very, very important to me. I earned my bachelor's of education um, through, I started out with the University of Minnesota and ended up graduating from the College of St. Scholastica. And probably halfway through my career, decided it was time to challenge myself some more. And I went back, I earned my master's and I now have that in curriculum and instruction. And it was an applied research program, which was wonderful because it really forced you to disseminate the information before you um, and figure out what was quality, reputable and um, or, or not. And, and certainly there is a wealth of information you'll find out in this job that comes at you. Not all of it is great. Um, but that, that is really um, an important thing for me. And as I raise my own children, I continually am trying to teach them and encourage them. I don't care if it's a four-year degree, a two-year degree, but they do need some type of, um, I encourage them to find a pathway for some type of higher education experience because it is a toolbox or a tool in the toolbox of life. And in the area that I represent, we are hurting for um, technical degrees, not four-year degrees, but we need um, labor type of jobs. And those are things that people should never be afraid you know, to go after. There is a balance to be had between two-year, four-year. But we are all, um, I think, better when we can get into uh, a situation where we can see the lives of others. And that is an opportunity that comes through these experiences. We're too, too often sheltered by our own experience, our own circumstances, and education is a ticket to the future. It does open the door. And um, I'm, I'm happy to be part of this committee. I look forward to the work and uh, I wish us all the best as we move forward. Thank you, Representative Sandstead. Now we're going to go to Representative Thompson. Welcome to the committee. Thank you, Chair, for having me um, today. Uh, uh, I represent Senate Districts, I mean, House District 67A, which covers the east side of St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, ironically, I came to St. Paul who was a, a high school student. Uh, um, you know, I, I thought I would be the next Dennis Rodman or someone who played the old basketball pretty good. Uh, uh, but my mother had a different path for me. She wanted me to play the tuba. <laughs> so. So this tuba I complained about, I complained a lot about this tuba that, that my mom made me play. And he's a six, three, six foot three black athlete. <laughs> I'm walking around the only nerd in school with this tuba that I complained about. I have to play this tuba. Have you ever heard someone don't know how to play the tuba uh, in their garage? <laughs> it's hard, but I became pretty good. Uh, nevertheless, at playing the tuba, you know, and so, you know, I started having to go to the Minnesota, I mean, I'm sorry, the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, you know, to listen to and mentor, mentor. Uh, same, this is nevertheless, the same tuba I complained about brought me to the state of Minnesota, to Duluth, Minnesota, uh, where it was a total culture shock coming from Chicago, predominantly black neighborhood to Duluth, Minnesota. It was a total culture shock for me. Uh, I, re I really realized that Chicago Public Schools did not prepare me for, for college. So I partied from Duluth to Superior, Wisconsin every day. <laughs> so I pretty much partied uh, until my mother came and snatched me out of school. She said I was occupying space for somebody who really wanted to learn. It was going to get somebody pregnant here is what she said. And so... Um, she sent me to Central State University in Virginia, Ohio, where I didn't know anybody. Um, and I had my first son, nevertheless. <laughs> so so uh, I, had to, I had to leave college. Um, I had to leave and I, I wound up taking a trade uh, with the Vicar School of Hydraulics and Pneumatics. I got uh, very proficient in uh, steam engines, gears, hydraulics, uh, pinions, and lo and behold, uh, but 20 something years later, I've been a machinist. Uh, I worked uh, in Cicero, Illinois at a steel foundry as an industrial machinist. And for the past 11 years, I've worked for St. Paul Public Schools 
as a machinist slash equipment repair technician, um, made pretty decent money. I mean, about eighty thousand dollars a year. Um, uh, you know, and my brother he stayed this just stayed his path, and he got his college degree, and he's still paying college his college debt off right now. So I always smash that in his face. But nevertheless, I do know people who have four year degrees and and they're no longer, they just have a lamb skin, but they're not working in the field, but they still nevertheless have debt that they have to pay. Um, I do realize that we have taken these options off the table for a lot of people who look just like me, uh, career pathways. And then what happens is we wonder why we uh, gather in front of the liquor store around in, in, the, in the areas of St. Paul with no skills, no jobs, uh, looking for government benefits to help us out because a lot of the options have been taken off the table for us. And, 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 and nevertheless, college was not an option for a lot of families. Uh, you know, college wasn't an option because we didn't get a degree. We didn't get, we didn't get a scholarship and my parents, our parents sure enough couldn't afford college. Uh, you know, so, you know, I did hear, um, a couple of things. Uh, that, and I just were taking notes. We've seen like so long, uh, but these pathways definitely were, were, were one of the main reasons why I was excited to be uh, here in this uh, uh, committee here. And also, you know, just to show how it causes a you know financial hardship after college. I mean, what's good? What's good at having a four year degree if you spend half your salary paying off your student debt? Uh, and then you 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 can't find a job with the lambskin that you have because nobody wants to you know, hire somebody fresh out of college. You need to have something under your belt. Like these are things that people didn't tell us, you know, going to college. You know, and these are these are real problems that happen in our community. Uh, you know, I heard someone say that uh, you know, you know, we need to focus on you know, not only college, but some of these kids want to want to you know fix snowmobiles, which is true. I, I mean, in, in my eleven year, twelve year tenure working with the district, I know a lot of kids who are fidgeting their thumbs in these classrooms, not only in high school but in some of these college classes. They're not interested in the curriculum being taught. They just want a lambskin because they think they have this dream that they're going to get this good paying job right out of college. And they get out of college and realize that the only thing that they probably could do is change oil at Jiffy Lube, you know, with a with a with a college degree. You know, <laughs> like it's, it's, I know I know some of my 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 good friends has a degree in mortuary science. I was very good at um, doing facial reconstruction, and this was what she wanted to do. And when she graduated, she found out that there wasn't a funeral home on this earth that would hire minority uh female because all of these uh all these funeral homes are family owned <laughs> so she has a degree here but nevertheless she's a she's a school teacher now so we we pay all this money for these degrees and it's just a piece of paper i also know people with four-year degrees and stupid i mean they have these degrees and they, 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 they don't even have common sense let alone <laughs> good they don't even have common sense so you know, so, so, you know um, yeah, education, uh, what my mom used to call it, uh, educated fool is what the she, my mom used to call it. These educated fools, they're dumb in a box of rocks, but they have a lambskin nevertheless. Uh, I'll, I'll go on, uh, I heard Albright say, and Albright, thank you, uh, Representative Albright, I'm definitely a Chicago Blackhawks fan, and Wayne Gretzky is definitely uh, someone who motivates me. And so I did hear what you said about, um, about Wayne Gretzky. And I'll tell you this, what my mom shared with me, uh, my mom passed uh, six years ago, but she was one of the, one of the most, uh, she's the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. And I, I'll go and I'll say, my mom said to me, you can be a plumber, you can be a janitor, you can be the person that scoops up horse mess in the farm, just be the best, that you can be. And before you know it, you'll be the supervisor. Before you know it, you'll be the manager. And before you know it, you'll be the owner. And so I'm just interested in like creating pathways, career pathways, and not just a four year degree. You have a four year lambskin and nothing to, but debt behind that. 
it. So I'll move. Thank you, Representative Thompson. Now we are upon the end of our committee and I am wondering if uh, Representative Sendell would um, be okay with me, or him and I doing the, um, do it, sharing ours the next time. Is that okay with you, Representative Sendell? I'm trying to see if I can, thumbs up. It'd be an honor, uh, Chair uh, uh, Bernardi, to uh, share the agenda with you. Okay, thank you so much. Well, thank you, members. I um, hope you found that as um, interesting as I did. You have amazing lives and amazing families. And uh, thank you for sharing your stories, the commonality that we have. And um, it would be nice to reflect on that together in the future. So I just want to say tomorrow we will be having our um, nonpartisan staff overview. And uh, Representative Sandell and I will share our higher ed stories. Uh, so the suspense. Uh, stay tuned. And then next week, we'll have the Office of Higher Education, and then we'll have an introduction to our students group and student testimony on their current experiences with higher education. So uh, thank you, members, and welcome to the committee. And um, with that, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>